So let's start to record something there. Dark. Yeah, okay, so now now it's looping. Yeah, it just just plays loop and I can change the length of the loop And I can can get really like really short and then I can I can scan through, through, so change the start position. You can hear that it sounds a little bit like it's like really uh, slowing down scene. So now you know how time stretch works. And also I can change pitch. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the scene that we will try to, um, try to like explain how to how to build and uh, yeah let's uh, let's go to to the code so to build this kind of uh, this kind of uh, instrument uh, sampler looper whatever that deals with uh, with some amount of data we need uh, we need a buffer we need some place in memory where we can um, place our uh, sound and on daisy seed uh, there is uh, daisy seed comes with uh, 64 megabytes uh, sd ram which is uh, enough for up to 10 minutes audio so for today we will use only five seconds uh, from them and um, basically what is a buffer a buffer is just an array yeah, and uh, audio is represented uh, is as a series of float values so buffer is just an array of floats and we need to uh, calculate the the size of this array up front and uh, we have five seconds we know that uh, on daisy seed uh, default um, sample rate is uh, 48k so we just multiply uh, this duration of five seconds by uh, sample rate and we know how many uh, how long our buffer, sh buffer should be and what is the most important here is that uh, defining this array for the for the buffer we need to specify this uh, macro in in front yeah so between type and the array itself so the uh, daisy is the ram bss this actually will make uh, the daisy to allocate this memory from sd ram so now when we have this um, when we have this array uh, we can pass it to the looper itself and do something something with it um, and we are doing it in uh, setup method. Uh, two uh, two things about uh, this SDRAM uh, SDRAM memory. So first, we we can we define it as static, but uh, we can work with it. Actually, work with it only after initialization of the of the uh, board itself. And uh, so here we have the, the call to in initialize uh, DAISY itself. We pass uh, the sample rate of 48K. And uh, then after that, we actually initialize looper, uh, passing the buffer itself and uh, length of this buffer. And that's basically everything that is needed for, for looper to to work except controls of course and uh, if we go to looper itself which I defined as a as a class in a separate file in this sense in this case so here we have uh, this init method which uh, accepts a pointer 
to the uh, to the buffer. So when we pass this buffer, we don't pass the, the buffer itself. We, po we pass the only the pointer to the first element of the array. And pointer is just a memory address. Yeah, so it just says, okay, here's your start from here, and this is your land. And uh, on C++, how it works uh, is uh, any array passed to the to the function as an argument, it's uh, automatically uh, turns into the uh, into the pointer to the first element. Uh, in this case. Uh, we have uh, like uh, one uh, single dimensional array, so we are talking about mono in this case. Uh, if we want stereo, then we need two arrays and either pass them separately or pack them in uh, like some package that we can work with as a, as a stereo if we want to process both buffers every time simultaneously. So what are we doing here uh, in this method? We uh, save in internal variable the uh, pointer to the buffer, and we also save the length of the buffer because without it we cannot iterate uh, iterate through it. And the next step I find really important is we uh, actually reset everything in this buffer to zero. And uh, this is really important because uh, if uh, if we don't uh, don't do this, this memory that allocated it it can contain whatever, and it's it it can sound really unpleasant if if nothing is recorded on top. Yeah, so uh, it's uh, like a rule that I'm always following, and I recommend to follow it uh, every time when you acquire some piece of memory first what you do is uh, uh, erase everything set it to zero or whatever is initial value there and uh, this uh, function to do this memset it's more or less standard function so it uh, first i set the the buffer i give it a buffer uh, and then uh, zero is actually a value that should be uh, should be put on every um, f f should, this buffer should be filled with these values, and uh, then I have the the size the size of the uh, of this buffer in bytes. Yeah, so uh, this buffer buffer contains floats, and uh, Daisy Seed uh, is uh, thirty two bits uh, board, so every float. Uh, is 32 bits, which is uh, 4 bytes. So this size of float will give me 4, and then I multiply it by uh, buffer length, so I know how many bytes I need to reset to 0. So that's basically, so we created buffer, um, send it to looper, and from here we can start building, actually doing something with it. But before we go into the code, I would like to switch to slides. Hopefully, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe there are some uh, questions already from uh, yep. some, great, some great. people. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that Omri is asking uh, if the 10 minutes of the DAISY, the limitation, is on 48K. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, is that, is uh, uh, it's it's uh, what I what I read. Uh, it's what what's written on their uh, product page, as far as I remember. But basically, this limitation depends on the uh, on the uh, sample rate and uh, whether we work with stereo or mono. Yeah, with stereo, it will be twice less than mm -hmm. than mono. So uh, if we uh, divide um, uh, if we divide uh, sixty four megabytes by uh, the size of the um, of uh, of the float and uh, the sample rate, then we can calculate exact exact number. For me, it's a little bit hard to do, like just in the head. But so I, uh, if you want like real 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 number, how how many it should be? It's uh, more or less simple arithmetics to to calculate it. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I don't see any uh, questions. Maybe we could uh, go ahead to the slides. Yep. Uh, can you see slides now? Uh, 
I cannot see it yet because I'm like uh, I'm actually seeing the live stream and the stream is uh, yeah there's like a time between. Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming I'm seeing it. I, I'm, okay. I'm still in the in, yeah. Very okay. Late to let's see. let's ju then just yeah just go from there. Oh, I do I do have a question now. Okay. Oh, and and they can see the slides faster okay, than I do. Okay, great. <laughs> That's great. good to know. That's great. Uh, but uh, could the buffer be saved uh, to a micro SD to play different saved buffers? Uh, hey, Gary. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you can of course you can communicate. So uh, you can uh, connect to to the board. You can connect SD card, and you can play from uh, from SD card. So, but it's uh, yeah, it requires some additional additional work, additional uh, hardware, additional code to to manage this. So yeah, theoretically, in general, it's possible to to work with SD card. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Let's continue. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now we we've got this uh, this buffer. Yeah, that uh, you see on the top. I mean, it's like smaller than it uh, actually is. It's uh, way way bigger. And yeah, as I said already, the beginning of it, it's actually just a pointer to the uh, to the uh, beginning of the um, a pointer to the beginning of the. Um, uh, of the of this array uh, slices somewhere from from SDRAM and the uh, the buffer length in the end it's actually buffer length it's just cut a little bit I, um, it actually shows the the length of the buffer so usually so what we are going to to do here we will uh, use the concept of so-called circular, circular, circular buffer. Uh, so, uh, what uh, what uh, does it mean? That it's uh, always uh, the reading and writing. It's uh, always happen in cycle. Yeah. So once it reaches the end of the of the buffer, the it starts from the beginning. So it all the time circles. So here uh, these two two errors, red one and green one. Uh, they are uh, one is uh, right, uh, like right hat, yeah, and another one is read hat. It's more or less like on on tape machine you have something similar. Yeah, you have two two separate heads. And uh, in um, like classical circular buffer, uh, read hat always follows the the right hat. Yeah, so it's like behind. So it's first writes something and then it reads, and um, this uh, distance between them, it's actually a delay. Yeah, so if you want to build a delay line, that's how you, that's, that's what, what is this delay. It's actually uh, how, uh, how far behind the reading position comparing to the, to the writing position. Okay, so how it works, if, it's, if we like try to animate it somehow, so it write something, read something, and at some point when red uh, right hat already um, uh, reached the end of the buffer, it starts, jumps to the beginning, and uh, the read hat still continues, continues there, so it, it just continues like this, and yeah, so that's, that's basically uh, that's uh, continues until, until we stop this, or uh, or it will just continue forever. And um, in many cases, this uh, wrapping around happens uh, using so-called uh, modular oper operator, this uh, uh, percent that I put on top of the, on top of the, uh, um, of this slide. And if we just jump, uh, jump to the code, I will just uh, quickly um, give uh, if you if you uh, never seen this uh, this operator before I want just to quickly explain you what what uh, does it do so if we have a uh, let's say if we have five modular two 
the result of it will be a one. It's actually remain uh, remaining uh, of the division. Yeah, so by, uh, five by two, you can have like two. Yeah, it one one remains. But if you do it another way around, so if the first operand is uh, less than the second one, it will always be uh, the same as the first one. So if uh, in this case, if I say I have like, let's say with, uh, we call it like read head yeah, and we have buffer, uh, this will always uh, and we before we increment, uh, increment this position. Yeah, so we increment and then we check against uh, against the buffer. It will always remain return the same unless read is actually equal to the buffer. At this point, the remaining will be zero. So read will effectively, so we say like read equal read. So it effectively will jump to zero again. So it's like usually the same result can be done with uh, just simple if read equal buffer then we say that read is zero. Yeah, so the result will be the same. It's more convenient to do it this way. So let's continue with with our with our buffer. Um, yeah, so that's uh, how the like classical circular buffer works. Uh, there are a little different flavors. Yeah, so circular buffers in general they are used for a lot, a lot of different scenes in audio development. So from actually doing this uh, like delay lines and all this stuff to like passing data between processes and um, also. Uh, uh, behavior is a little bit different than that uh, like um, a read head can uh, can be that it just follows uh, the right head just right behind it like on the next next byte and if um, uh, if uh, the uh, one of them stops, another stops, and uh, also yeah. So if, for instance, we see that uh, okay, the the receiving side cannot read anymore or something, then it also stops. Uh, you know, then uh, right head more or less wraps and then stops and doesn't write any anything else. Uh, with like audio with delays, it's more or less like just continues. So there are different different flavors. Uh, for today, I uh, I thought that it will be interesting to see a little bit more like independent behavior between this uh, right head and read head, so they are more or less uh, will work independent. Uh, the only, uh, but they will both like um, wrap around this buffer. Yeah, so. This is our buffer, yeah. So that's where we start, and uh, this is how the recording actually works. So uh, recording starts at any point when I when I just uh, when I uh, press the the record button, and it stops when when I release it. Yeah. So in this uh, case, uh, it it doesn't like just record from beginning to the end and stops or something like this. So it's actually I can. Uh, record inside uh, new portions of audio at any point of time and any length. And uh, when I press, uh, at least how it's done, uh, how it's done in this particular project, the recording head will take the position of the uh, of the playhead, yeah, of the green one, and it will just start recording from there, and will record until I hold uh, hold the the record button, so it will. It I can just circle through through this buffer uh, for any any amount of time. So that's basically how the how the recording will work. Uh, reading so playback works a little bit different. So uh, beginning of the loop start as as we said already as we've seen, uh, it's controlled by the by the knob, by the streamer, and uh, 
it uh, loop land also uh, controlled by by the trimmer so this it can be uh, uh, can be uh, way more smaller than the buffer or it can be actually the maximum length is actually length of the buffer it cannot be uh, it cannot be bigger and um, what's happening here it's uh, the playhead actually wraps twice so first it wraps uh, around the buffer length yeah so when it comes to the end of the buffer it starts from the beginning and the second what's happening is when it reaches the loop end it jumps also with this modular uh, no here it will be not modular operator but i just put it here for simplicity for now so more or less it just jumps to the beginning of the of the loop yeah so it's like it has two like two buffers yeah buffer inside buffer so one uh, one is the loop itself that uh, constrains uh, movement of the of the head and this uh, second one is uh, the entire buffer so basically this is the the design of the of the scene yeah so that that everything that is uh, uh, that is needed to make it work to make this uh, this particular project work um, but there are a little uh, a little bit tweaks that we need to do to make it sound better and uh, we will look at them uh, in a in a moment but before i would like to ask if there are any questions uh, so far about this like general uh Adam really likes your visual uh, representations of buffers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. So um, the scene with this uh, with this implementation is that it will work. It will cycle. Everything will be fine. It's simple. It it's just several lines of code, but it's going to produce clicks. It will click. Uh, why it's going to click? Because in the beginning of recording, um, audio level was some particular. In the end, it was something different. Uh, in the beginning of the loop and in the end of the loop, also the sound is different. Yeah, so, and uh, there is no guarantee that they will somehow match and will will somehow uh, work nicely together. Also, when we change. Uh, change the loop length and loop start it also uh, will click because uh, it just uh, breaks the normal movement uh, of the of the playhead yeah it will just jump then it also will create some clicks so there are different techniques how to mitigate this uh, for today i i at least I hope I uh, chosen s simplest, uh, at least one of the simplest to like give you uh, overview what can be done. And um, so let's start again with the with the recording. Oh, sorry, wrong wrong screen. <laughs> yeah. So of course if we don't want clicks in the beginning and end what do we need to do we need to add some fades fade in fade out and uh, in this case we are not talking about uh, actually matching the loop exactly like in in some like sampler instruments where you want to like uh, really make this loop unnoticeable so you can play with a keyboard and there will be no like uh, it 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 will like play smoothly yeah so here uh, it's a little bit uh, a little bit simpler in this case so we can just we don't need actual like crossfades and uh, find some uh, points that match we can just do fade in fade out yeah so uh how does it work for recording in recording fade in is basically simple yeah we start recording and we can just add some counters that will uh, count through some amount of samples in this case it's uh, this fade length which i defined in code so it's like around 12 milliseconds um, and it just 
uh, increases the, the volume of recorded sin signal. But with the, uh, when we stop recording, it's a little bit harder because what we need to do, we need to have more or less behavior like uh, with uh, envelope, you have a release on envelope. Yeah? So you already released the, uh, the, the key, but note still still place yeah so here we need the same behavior more or less so when we already release a record uh, button it needs to add this s small fade out so not just cut it immediately so uh, how it's done here for recording uh, it's basically the same technique as will be probably used for building envelopes so uh, I have uh, this variable uh, called recording envelope position and uh, second variable that works with this is recording envelope position increment and this increment can be one or minus one and uh, what's happening when I uh, press uh, record uh this increment becomes one so it grows yeah so the the volume of the of the recording goes up until it reaches uh more or less reaches one this attenuation just reaches one so there is no uh no uh attenuation and it uh, remains one until i release uh, the the record button and when I release the record button it just changes to minus one and it goes to zero and when it's zero we consider that okay now recording is stopped we will look into the code how it's done a bit later but now I'm just I just want to give you an overview how how it works so basically uh, this way we can also we could say that okay we we go not to uh, one when we uh, at the top position but we go a little bit lower and in this uh, case we can actually like layer the new recordings on top of, of uh, it will be not uh, overwritten completely it will be just layer it on top and so uh, this this technique uh, already suggests like some additional ways of manipulating this this uh, uh, values and yeah those uh, envelopes uh, f uh, currently it's uh, linear just simplest linear uh, of course it can be uh, some some curve that uh, maybe works somehow better but in this case like again for simplicity sake I just left it um, uh, linear so it's easier to to see how it works for playback it's a little bit different because with playback we know exactly when the loop ends yeah so in this case uh, technique is the same but uh, it just uh, traces the playhead position uh, relative to the to the loop start and end so when loop starts it uh, it increments again to one and then it sees okay uh, it's actually fade length until the loop ends so it starts uh, going going down so pretty pretty simple in this sense and okay it was a slide great uh, now we can go into the code eventually and see how how all this thing works. Uh, yeah, one uh, one thing before before we uh, before we continue. Um, so here, uh, all those variables that I just mentioned uh, defined in the class. It's in private area of the class, so they are not exposed outside of the class. It's just internal thing, and uh, in case you are not familiar with this notation size t, I guess actually you you familiar with it if you worked with uh, with audio callbacks already because buffer size usually uh, defined as size t. Uh, 
so uh, what is this type it's uh, uh, this type is uh, the it contains uh, it allows to represent the size of any object on the system so it always like maximum that is maximum that is possible the bottom limitation is 16 bits yeah, so minimum is 16 bits. On DAISY seed, particularly on, on this uh, uh, CPU, it uh, will be the same as, actually it will be the same as integer, and it will be the same as LON. It will be four, uh, four bytes, so 32 bits. Yeah, so it's so here it's, it doesn't make big difference uh, as if I would say LON let's say, but it makes difference in terms of uh, portability. If we want to reuse this looper on some another platform which has uh, different sizes. And uh, yeah, so this is like the, let's say it's like proper way of doing it. Yeah, so it's uh, when uh, usually when we specify the size of arrays and uh, iterates through arrays and especially in this case when we are dealing with big numbers, uh, we are using this type. And this type is uh, uh, unsigned. Yeah, so it uh, can cannot contain uh, negative values. So it's from only from zero and up. And uh, yeah, when you work with something like this, um, just just a small hint, just be careful uh, with the arithmetics like um, subtractive arithmetics. So if you uh, do a minus uh, a minus b and both are unsigned, and if b happens to be more than a, so it should go somehow in negative values. If because unsigned cannot contain negative value, the result will be really interesting. So it's it will be not what you expect at all. So every time when you if you're dealing with with unsigned uh, unsigned integers uh, and do some some arithmetics, make sure that you not that you don't like uh, go into negative as a result of, uh, of uh, arithmetics, because this kind of issues, sometimes it's really hard to track. So yeah, otherwise, um, that's why actually this recording envelope position increment that I just mentioned, which can be negative, it's actually integers, uh, integer 32t. This type is also uh, so what what does it do? It guarantees that this value will be 32 uh, bits. Uh, so it will be 32 bits integer. And but it's signed, so it can can go uh, back and forth. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, so fade length, as I as I already said, it's like 600 um, uh, samples, so it's around around 12, uh, 12 milliseconds, I guess. Uh, minimum loop length, I said, as two fade lengths. Yeah, so they, it's always like, uh, allows for both fade in and fade out. So with this, uh, let's jump directly into this uh, process method. Yeah, so process method returns float, which is output and takes in input for recording. So, yeah, a lot of stuff happening here, but um, most of this stuff is actually for all about those fades, fade in, fade out. The essence of it, it's here, actually. So uh, buffer recording he head equal in. Yeah, so this is basically where, when, where input gets recorded into the, into the buffer and then we increment recording head and then we wrap it around buffer length with modular operator that's it so that's all what's what's happening what's happening here it's like the, this basic um, uh, basic functionality uh, to and yeah uh, here so first what we do 
we uh, here it's uh, actually uh, if uh, checks if increment is more than zero so we are in the beginning of the uh, of the uh, of the recording or we are going through it yes um, it uh, and uh, the recording envelope position less uh, than land yeah so we didn't reach uh, didn't reach the um, uh, the top uh, the fire the the end of the uh, of the fade and uh, or basically if it's negative and uh, we also didn't reach the the position in the end yeah which is zero yeah, so when it goes down it's the the end position will be zero if it goes up it will be the same as fade land because the fade there is linear and more or less square yeah so I, there is no like special uh, curve or relation between between them but it's actually 45 degrees uh, in this case it's actually increments the position and because this increment can be positive or negative it goes either up or it goes down and uh, as long as recording uh, this position is uh, more than zero yeah so we said that uh, when we were looking on slides let me just bring slides back about recording um just a second I hope I can run it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that here uh, when after we uh, released recording is released, and we reached the fade land, then this recording envelope position is zero. And so we like at the at the very bottom. So in this case, we just stop. Uh, we just uh, stop recording so that's why here there is this condition yeah so if uh, if it's more we record until it's higher that's it basically about recording okay maybe just a quick question yep. if you guys have uh, more questions please write them down um so if size t is unsigned Yep. Then when loop start is defined, why is it initiated to minus one, which is a negative number? Yeah, it's actually it's actually a mistake. It's it, that's that's a good cage. It's actually a mistake for me. Yeah, uh, because okay. uh, originally it was like different types, and then I decided to change type, but I forgot to to change this. Yeah, so good cage. That's actually uh, shouldn't be like this. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Okay, nice cool. cool. I, I don't. I don't see uh, any more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Then what do we have here? What do we have here? Actually, let's just change it then. If we, uh, that's, yeah. And, um, yeah, then uh, there, is a, there is a property is empty. So in this case, I don't start uh, playback until uh, something is recorded. So it, it just doesn't just circle on empty buffer. And this uh, will be set uh, empty, uh, will be set to false. Uh, I will show you uh, a bit later in uh, actually when we handle the press recording press I can show it just right now yeah so here we set is empty false once we start recording and uh, at this point it also starts also playback so here more or less the logic uh, this is playhead uh, less uh, if playhead is less than fate then we calculate attenuation by dividing playhead to fade land otherwise uh, if we uh, about to reach the end of the loop then it calculates this uh, this static cast um, it's uh, basically it's the same as if i would write it in this case it will do the same thing as 
if I uh, just write here like this, float. Uh, why I did like this? It's more or less because standard C++, uh, this way of just saying float in the beginning is a C uh, way of doing it. And um, uh, C++, uh, with C++, it's done with uh, this cast. Uh, and there are different casts. Uh, there is static cast, uh, dynamic cast, uh, reinterpret cast. Uh, more or less, uh, with these mechanics, with, with these semantics, uh, what is the aim is to tell compiler um, more precisely what do what do you expect from 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 it? Yeah, so what what compiler? Because uh, depending on uh, what is uh, what is the type that we are trying to cast and what is the receiving type, uh, compiler will try to do a little bit different things. And if here we just say like just float without specifying static cast, it will uh, try to choose the way how it should be casted, and it's not always the 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 best one. So uh, it in this case, uh, technically, if you write just float, it will work. Everything will be fine. But uh, I would recommend to go with this like static cast with all this uh, C++ in general is pretty verbose language when you go to all these standard constructions. And uh, if you look through through the Daisy Duino library, you will see it a lot there. That casting done actually this way there. So it's like good to just get to use get used to this um, uh, uh, this notation, and it's then easier to even understand the code later. So this is uh, attenuation calculated. And uh, then we uh, calculate play position as loop start plus uh, play head and wrap it around buffer land. And um, we uh, output buffer at play position multiplied by attenuation. And then we increment play head. Um, then uh, Yep, as I mentioned already during slides, uh, wrapping around loop, uh, it's not done just by modular operator, but there is uh, this little bit more uh, verbose condition. So it's like if play hat uh, more equal loop length, then play hat is zero. And what's happening in between? There is, I define this painting loop start and loop start. Uh, so why is it done like this? It's actually uh, the easiest and simplest way to mitigate, uh, to remove clicks during changing of the parameters. So what I what I have done here is uh, when I change loop start and loop length, it will be actually applied on the next loop. So it will continue the the, the current loop with the previous settings and then when it's, once it reaches the end of the loop, it will apply apply the new position. With, a, uh, uh, with a short loop length, it's uh, uh, more or less unnoticeable, this delay between changing with bigger. Yeah, that's more or less the trade-off, yeah, that it has a little bit of delay then, uh, so responsiveness of these changes is a little bit like it's slow, yeah. Oh, that's basically what's what is happening here. Uh, yeah. So when I set loop, I actually set not the loop start. Loop start is set only in the beginning. That's why actually I set here minus one. Uh, so to denote like the the initial initial position. Um, but probably it's it's need to be done actually i need to introduce uh like a flag yeah you know, that it's like initial setting um so i set actually pending loop start yeah you know, basing on the on the values that i that i receive here and yeah that's basically uh and yeah i um set a maximum uh loop length to uh, to the buffer land 
and yeah that's it so pretty um, i would say pretty simple uh this this implementation that that i'm just showing it's not uh, not a definition of looper of course yeah if you look on the on the daisy um daisy doing a library on daisy sp there is a looper class implemented there and it works more like a standard pedal looper i would say yeah so behavior there is a little bit different so my aim today was to like give you overview of different like different techniques different behaviors that can be uh can be used when you work with uh with uh, those buffers and um, that's basically uh everything that that looper uh, class itself uh, has a uh, couple of things that i would uh, probably add here what i want to emphasize is that uh, Maybe, before yep. we continue uh so quick uh, two questions um is the purpose of cast simply to change types um, uh, yes like uh, from int to, yeah yeah so here it's uh, actually it's for this because if we will uh, divide uh, playhead by this and both are integers the result uh, uh, will be like it will treat it as integer yeah but we want actually some float value so to do this we sh we say actually i could do i could cast only one of them and in C++, there is so-called promotion, type promotion. So it uh, always tries to promote all the types to the highest precision of the, uh, of the uh, expression. Yeah? So even if only one of them is flawed, uh, it, uh, either it will automatically promote the second one to flawed, or it will complain that we are trying to divide flawed by integer. So in this case, it's uh, to get to get it uh, work, treat it as uh, as floats and divide as floats, actually, and not integers. Okay, and what does the namespace declaration do? Yes, that's what I wanted to to actually uh, yeah to explain the next. So namespace in the so what what is why is it here? It's here basically because looper is exactly the name of uh, the class in Daisy SP already. And if I have the second class looper, it will, it will uh, be a name collision and compiler doesn't know which looper I, I mean. Yeah. So one way of doing it is of course, like just uh, have another, another name, like simple looper yeah, or something, but, um, there is uh, also for for this for actually organizing this for naming that's why it's called namespace uh, there is this uh, uh, special special uh, command namespace and it doesn't do anything it's it's not a type it's just actually this wrapper to to uh, um, to distinguish one names from from another they can be also nested so here I could for instance add names namespace i don't know simple yeah and drop class into this even more so and usually yes usually those namespaces they contain either the name of the of the person who created it or name of the company or name of the product sometimes it name of the company name of the product so basically what's happening then uh, on on this so here it's used as syntuex uh, two times colon looper. And yeah, so that's that's how how it is used then. Yeah, so I can specify that it's like my looper, but when I work inside the namespace, I can uh, use the simple short names. I don't need to come up with something just to distinguish my classes or my variables from like global ones. And I prefer using like simple names so namespace actually serves for this and uh, yeah the last thing that i want to show here is this pragma uh, uh, directive so what uh, what is it for it's um, 
uh, last time during uh, previous workshop I shown a little bit different uh, different technique for for this so this is actually to ensure that this class will be uh, defined only once and another uh, another way of doing it you can see both used is actually if and def uh, let's say I say um, sin to x looper h I say define sin to x buffer h and in the very end of the in the very end of the of the file I say and if yeah so this another technique of, of doing the same uh, what is the difference uh, the difference is that um, this if and def it works actually on the on the content level yeah so it uh, actually what does it do it uh, once this variable uh, uh, this variable is defined here and it sees it again somewhere in another file let's say compiler decided to copy this file somewhere for some purposes yeah so you have already two definitions still it will be only one for this for one definition because it will see that okay this thing is defined already I will not do anything else so I will not oh, sorry I will not continue in contrast pragma so this uh, this uh, this define works on a text level the pragma works on the file level so it uh, ensures that this file is processed once so theoretically it can fail if compiler does something actually clever and tries to like copy those files multiple times but uh, in mo most cases uh, at least in my experience it works um, it's the same widely used as uh, as this if dev nowadays it's uh, standardized already it's in the compiler so it's it's there and it's shorter it's somehow shorter looks better so that's that's why I'm using it so at least you know that you have these two two choices yeah you can do this way or that way and yeah with this probably I would switch to main file if there are no more questions about about this context uh, no this was great uh, people actually really appreciate the structure that you add to, to these uh, codes that's super nice oh, thanks um so yeah ah one more one more note about all this stuff so i mentioned that we have the pitch shifter yeah and this pitch shifter as you can see it's uh, separate it's not inside the looper yeah, I could uh, perfectly say that okay, pitch shift is a feature of the looper and it should be there. Why I didn't do it like this? To make looper portable in this case. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, this file doesn't include Daisy Duino or any other library, which means that I can take this looper and use it on any other any other board. Yeah, which provides so the most important that I provide it with a buffer yeah, so I I can allocate this amount of me I can use it for VST plugin for instance yeah I can use it for for any other other purpose and it's not uh, this is w one more like uh, one more thing that uh, allows to develop sometimes quickly because this class for instance I can so when developing this what I was doing I was uh, just supplying it with really small buffer of 10 10 values and just running loop of five values and just printing those values it's really easy to test it and to see that it okay it does everything 100% right yeah, so it's a way to make code testable also if you make your code independent from the platform you can easily test it then you don't need to to do something something else you know, to you don't need to supply somehow those those parses sometimes you just cannot supply them uh, especially in embed because uh, your classes library classes depend already on some hardware abstraction layer and all this uh, the board should be somehow involved in this so this is one of course if it's uh, some if you need to use some 
oscillator inside, then it can be a little bit more difficult if it's not your oscillator, if it's library. But still, uh, uh, what I would recommend doing uh, doing it is try to uh, to abstract what you are doing as much as possible from the from the platform. In this case, you you can actually uh, move your code uh, better. And these types like size t and using those kinds of types, it actually adds to this because if you just use integers like plain built-in types, that's one of the main problems with portability of C++ code. Um, yeah, so let's go to the to the main class. So yeah, here we have this looper itself, we have p uh, and if you look on audio callback, it's really, really simple and small. It's just a uh, looper process. Uh, in, in this case, my input is wired to the, uh, to the second uh, input, so here it's one. And uh, here also I've, I would like to emphasize this, that it's the same as uh, with initialization of the, of the buffer. Actually, it's great to initialize everything. So whenever you define something, some, uh, some property somewhere, initialize it. So set it to zero. If it's Boolean, set it to false if it should be false. So because uh, ideally there is no guarantee. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, strictly speaking, there is no guarantee that something will be um, uh, will be initialized to to some particular value. So uh, that's good, like good habit to develop. Once you initialize something, uh, define something, initialize it, and the same here. So I work with mono, but I output both both uh, left and right with the same because uh, I don't know maybe I will uh, connect uh, somehow accidentally to another buffer and I don't want to hear unprocessed buffer it sounds uh, not very pleasant and it can even damage your hardware so um, it's also somehow good to good to do this so either you output the same to both left and right if you have only two outputs or you explicitly set zero to one of them and so you know that it's uh, it's zero it's safe um, so initialization is uh, so setup method is also pretty simple yeah so for part of it we've seen already it's uh, initializing daisy sample rate taking sample rate because we need to provide pitch shifter with this sample rate then we set pin mode to record pin input and we start audio callback so pretty much the standard routine of the of what what uh, of initialization and quick uh, question from yep. adam um so on line 26 when you're uh, using uh, the input 26 uh, let me see just a second yep so you have in one and you have in zero um does it matter which one you're using if it's mono or it's no no like it can be zero it can be it. one they are actually yeah so they are independent completely so on my mm -hmm. uh, on my instrument on spotikach i actually use uh, one and uh, zero and one as for two completely separate processing channels so they are not going as stereo they are just two completely separate mono so you can do whatever and the same for output. You can output uh, say that okay, it's two completely different like different outputs. They have nothing in common. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, Adam. That's in zero and in one. Uh, yeah. So in zero, I think is uh, pin sixteen. Yeah. In one is pin seventeen, and then out is eighteen and nineteen. Yeah, and um, yeah. yeah. And by convention, usually they are referred as zero is left and one is right. Yeah, just because we are yeah. probably. And and actually, um, it might be interesting to think about it um, from from like functionality standpoint. If you think about mutable instruments outputs, for example, in uh, plats, for instance, you actually have two outputs. Uh, if you have a stereo out, you don't necessarily have to use the stereo out. You could use it for creating two different outputs. One of them could be one um, effect and another one could be an another effect. 
Uh, it's just um, it's pretty cool that you could actually do it, and it could be really uh, it could it could be used in a very creative way. Yeah. Okay, then we go to loop. And in loop, what we are doing, we are reading parameters. Uh, we are reading uh, controls and setting those parameters. So here I'm using fmap uh, for, uh, for mapping the, uh, the uh, value of the, uh, of the knob uh, to between 0 and 1. So this is for loop start, just uh, goes from zero and one. And yeah, this is also uh, a good, uh, like good habit to uh, make your, uh, when you define controls, when you define some inputs for controls on your class, on like receiver. Yeah, so you expect here float and you expect normalized value. This also allows you to easily uh, change uh, change the type of control, change, uh, uh, again, move between platforms. So it's it's way easier to work with, with normalized values in this case. Uh, loop land defined the same, but here I'm using this mapping exponential. So the response of this loop land is not linear, it's exponential. So um, that is what, what I wanted uh, to, uh, to show that... Uh, the most like the the most um, uh, well known case when you need some uh, curved response from the button is when you uh, control vol volume. Let's say yeah. So when you control volume, you need to, uh, linear will not give you the same hearing perception as if you uh, if you do it with a with a curve. But that's not the only case when when you might need this. So in this case, uh, why it's exponential? It's because the um, because loop length changes between really small to like relatively big. Five seconds is already big, yeah, comparing to the to the smallest like several milliseconds, and the the shorter is loop length, the more precision you want in response. Yeah, so the the less the, the less responsive it should become. Yeah, so you can actually really tweak how how it works. So that's why it's exponential here. Um, yeah, then it's just setting uh, loop start loop length, and for record, it's even simpler. It just reads uh, recording pin zero one. And that's it. And uh, then we set in this set pitch. Yes, set pitch is a little bit like it, we don't set it uh, directly to pitch shifter. I have this uh, function. So uh, what's happening here in in this function? Um, uh, the the pitch. Yeah, we if I'm going from like uh, negative to positive, yeah, so da up and down uh, with the pitch. And the thing here that when I set, uh, when I have knob in the middle, I want to be sure that it's zero. Yeah, and if I don't, uh, usually it's really hard to find this like middle position, it's almost impossible because floats, in general floats, if you, if you work already with floats, um, there, even if you work with integers in this case, because of a jitter, you have always the values from the from the um, knobs. There is a jitter a little bit, yeah. So it always it, you can. It's really hard, at least, or sometimes you actually cannot even to to catch exact value. Yeah. So you cannot say just okay pitch is zero when value is 0 0.5 because it will never like match this these conditions floats in general uh, comparing floats it's a really complex topic and uh, uh, it's really hard to com uh, compare them uh, reliably so usually it's uh, with some um, with some deviation so you said some so what what I'm doing here to mitigate this I'm uh, allowing a little gap so 0 0.1 gap in the middle of the of the turn of the knob yeah so i say that pitch value is changing only until i reach 0 0.45 and then 0 
55 yeah and here i uh, it's totally fine to compare with these floats because i don't need exact comparison i just need to be somewhere in this area so and with this i know that okay if i am uh, because on on also on um uh, on the knob usual pot uh, it's really there is some like mechanical yeah mechanical uh, uh, scene that allows you to to find the middle position yeah so this is the the way to to find it just to allow and uh, make it easier to find and yet Otherwise, I just set this transposition to pitch shifter afterwards. Um, yeah, and that's probably it in general. Uh, one more thing that I would probably also tell is um, how the pins defined. Uh, it's uh, so in this case, uh, I'm using simple fix board. And for simple boards, uh, I created uh, this uh, simple daisy header. And uh, what this header actually, what, what does it do? It um, maps between the footprints on the board, on simple board and pins on, on daisy. So here, what, uh, what, do, uh, what do I have? I have this, uh, I defined it as macro. So A is uh, for pins that capable of uh, audio digital conversion. There are 12 on Daisy Seed. And D is uh, uh, digital pins. Yes, it every, more or less it's all pins except audio, IO and uh, power and ground. And how it works, what, what this, why uh, do I have this header? Uh, the function here is that if I uh, if I say A, it uh, suggests me the only those 12, uh, 12 uh, numbers, uh, 12 footprints on simple board that are capable of A. So I don't need to guess yeah, which which footprint I want to I want to use. Uh, so whether this footprint that I that I am uh, that I want to grab if it's can if it's actually one of analog or it's something else yeah with uh, digital it's way the uh, choice here is way bigger because more or less yeah all the pins can be can be digital and this header is available also on github there is a repository called simple templates so for now it's only for uh, for daisy seed mapping uh, later probably uh, we will extend it with uh, with uh, more boards or add more headers for more boards and uh, yeah so uh, try try using it it's pretty convenient maybe uh, um, we should uh, show them the um, the board because some people who don't know uh, the simple board don't really understand what exactly you're talking about okay I switched to you now uh, yeah, okay, that works too. Yeah. Uh, let's see if... Is this... Hmm. You're seeing my face, right? You're not seeing... Uh, yes. I'm not sure. showing the other video, but it doesn't show. Uh, okay. Oh, no. Let's see. If... Oh, okay. It's just really delayed on my computer. Like, is it like, this is so confusing. Okay. It did actually work anyway. Um, what Vlad was uh, referring to is uh, these pins here. So these are um, pins one to uh, actually 48. So it starts here at one and then it goes all the way to 24 and then it goes 25 all the way to 20, all the way to 48. 
And when you put your microcontroller here, it's connected internally here. So if you would want to interact with pin 36, um, you could simply route your potentiometer directly to pin 36 here. Um, and with the use of that um, little uh, class that Vlad created, you could just refer to S36. And if you'll try to make a digital pin, analog pin, it'll give you an error. Uh, so it makes it just easier for, uh, for getting started and for troubleshooting. Um, yeah. So Vlad, how, how, how did we um, do? Uh, do you have any, uh, any extra things that you wanted to talk about? Um, no, I guess, I guess it's pretty much, pretty much it. So I guess I, I hope I ex explained everything that, that was there. Okay, cool. You want to maybe, yeah. uh, put the final video so we can uh, wrap things up. Maybe ask if, uh, anyone has more questions, you can uh, bring them up on the chat. Okay, it seems like uh, everything is uh, clear. Okay, unless great. things are not synced, and I have no idea what's going on. It's a bit uh, yeah. confusing. This whole uh, live stream today is a bit uh, challenging. Yeah. Um, can you guys still hear us? Okay, we do have a question. How about running us through the process of pulling down the Git files and then uh, compiling an Arduino? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, Vlad, do you want to show how you take, um, like, just go to the SynthUX uh, GitHub and, and show how you take the file from there? Mm, I can try. The only thing that I will need to bring another window oh, yeah we don't have a yeah, yeah we, i we will i will just for that. i will just try to to edit quickly if i can um and let's see if it if it works but yeah i need a little bit of a little bit of preparation here mm. Okay, and okay. they also uh, they also wanted to uh, see a demo of the looper. Oh, the demo? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, just a second. Let's let's first go into. Uh, I just want to to log into GitHub. Yeah, step by step. A two zero. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm there. I'm there. All right. So let me now try to mm, uh, let me try to add this screen now to the to the stream and okay I don't know if it will not explode now <laughs> <laughs> because yeah because it did I, that's, before that's a lot of a lot of stuff is happening here already okay yeah now um just a second let me we're move. still seeing your id oh yeah there we go yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, just a second i will make it smaller that it fits yeah i mean it's it will be a little bit hard to to show because i need actually to uh, it's not only about the, the github itself it's also the terminal so what you need to do what you need to do in terminal so i will just probably for sake oh of you don't you don't need to show the installation of of, of daisy do you know no no it's actually about pulling down the code um so Actually, well, the way uh, I do it is just I click on the green button and download the whole folder. Yeah, you can either download it as a as a full zip, or you yeah. if you if you want to go fancy, you can actually clone it as as Git repository. The advantage yeah. of it is that you can stay 
uh, up to date with the code when something changes you can always just pull the new changes there um, and yeah then what uh, what's happening next uh, once you just downloaded this zip you unpack it you open it in Arduino and uh, you more or less just just run it and to run it uh, you need to connect there is actually I mean there are a lot of uh, small steps of uh, uh, regarding the original question it's uh, what which steps exactly are like interesting here too because it's a lot of steps involved there like small steps so it's like uh, compiling it's uh, selecting the board so oh yeah like um there is actually the video uh, about uh, about this already yeah so so there is there is an installation um of the daisy duino and and setting it up to make sure that you're actually working with the correct uh, microcontroller and setting it up correctly for uploading um that is uh, available on youtube on our youtube channel um but uh, if you take the GitHub uh, uh, repository, if you just take the, the folder, the zip folder, the only thing you need to do is to have the folder with all the files inside of it and double click the Eno file, so the Arduino file. And once you open that, it will take all the other files with it. So then you only need to press um, upload on the Arduino file and all the rest, all the classes that Vlad just showed you is, it's already part of it. The, the tabs, you'll see them as well. Yep, so everything is there. Yeah. Okay. Let's see another uh, question. Uh, has anyone figured out uh, the pin mapping for the Daisy pod? I have it partially working, um, I think, but not, uh, but not all. I would say this is maybe a question for Discord. Um, it's a bit yep. out of the scope of this uh, workshop. Um, yeah. and uh, I believe the Daisy Pod Pods. Okay, so that's another question on the on the Daisy Pods. Please just uh, drop this on on Discord. We have lots of conversations there on the Daisy. Um, okay, anything uh, about the sampler? Maybe Vlad, you can um, uh, run a quick uh, example, like at the beginning. Yep. Um... So let me see. Um, a link to Discord. Yeah, go to uh, Synthiox Academy website and at the top there is join the community. Um, this is the link. Mm -hmm. This will also add you to the mailing, mailing list. So every time that we run these workshops, you'll get an email from me. Um, yeah, about uh, different activities that we're running. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, have a listen. Okay, so yeah, um, radio is as an input, and yeah, I just set everything to maximum, and let's start to try to record something. Yeah, so now it's it's looping and I can change and yeah, so I'm changing now so as a, yeah that uh, what what I meant that when when um, loops are short then response to the change is like almost immediate when it's like bigger like five seconds of course and there is a little delay between and then we can scan through. And we can change pitch. Yeah. I really like to make this like small loops and then scan through because then it like provides like really interesting really interesting effects. 
Yeah, it's very cool, especially with with your dual looper. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do with it. Yeah, so yeah, of course, a lot of scenes can be added here, like reverse playback adds already a lot, uh, and uh, modulations of the um, of the slice position, slice length. That's actually another another reason why it's good to keep uh, inputs uh, input parameters as uh, uh, normalized floats 0 1 because like if you take lfo from uh, from daisy sp it's what you will get from from it you will get some normalized value as output and you can then just use it directly you don't need to do any additional conversions yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, that's... there's a quick question here about um, um, not finding the link on GitHub to download. Um, it's something that I'm also seeing sometimes. It's like on some pages you can actually download and on some pages you can't. Mm, you know, this is, I myself, I never seen it. Uh, so far, I didn't, uh, haven't seen this kind of problem. So yeah, that's something that I, I need to look at or probably maybe it's also a good question for Discord and someone maybe already uh, seen this uh, this problem before. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I, I see it as well. Okay, so what happens is if you are on um, this link that I'm posting now, you're going to see a button, a green button code, and then you can click on it and you can download the zip. But if you uh, if you're inside, so if you're in, inside of simple examples and then Daisy Duino, inside of that you only have go to file. Ah, yeah, that's that's what. Yeah, so download. Yeah, download happens only on the on the uh, top level of the repository. On the top level, right? Yeah, so okay, you so always you, you... you just uh, what you probably then uh, can do you just uh, even if you are inside there is always these breadcrumbs that shows you uh, the the way back so you uh, click the first one like simple examples in this case and then you can download yeah that makes sense so you basically get all the different instruments that Vlad wrote <laughs> Uh, there is the looper, there is a multi-voice drone, there is a string class, there is another string with a delay, another one with reverb, and another one just a string. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, Vlad, thank you so much again for all the work that you uh, bring to this community. It's uh, um, invaluable. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, people here are also saying uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you. We're going to see you uh, on uh, uh, this everyone and um uh, yeah please uh, suggest if you have any uh, uh particular uh, topics that you wanna you want us to cover or any workshops that you want us to uh, to bring up um make your suggestions uh if you want to help uh, on youtube like the best thing you could actually do is to write a comment now um maybe just a thank you and maybe uh, also maybe a suggestion or something that you learned or anything like that uh, because uh, youtube is basically uh, learning that this was valuable when people comment um so more people can see it and uh yeah thank you so much for for participating and we'll see you guys online and we'll see you uh probably in a week or two uh, with another workshop take care bye